Be me, about 9 or 10. Parents send me on team building camping trip for a week. Bullied, made to do the worst jobs. Everything sucks, out of control. Leave camp one night to get away from everyone. Go to the edge of a nearby lake. See someone walk across the shore. They go into the water. They go under. They do not come up. Run back to camp and hide because I saw a ghost. And I'm probably going to die like it's the ring or some shit. Soon after, whole camp is shut down. Everyone sent home. Local girl loaded backpack with rocks, walked into lake, and drowned. My face went, I saw someone die. I was halfway through my senior year in high school when my parents decided to move to another state. They looked into ways that I could stay behind and finish school. We had an elderly neighbor who my parents had become close with and they floated the idea of me staying at his house. He lived alone and had a second floor. They offered to pay him rent and I could help him with chores or whatever he needed while I was there. In return, I could stay and finish my senior year. He was happy to help since he lived alone and he needed help around the house. I was really glad I didn't have to move, so I agreed. And I moved in once my parents had moved. A month goes by and everything is fine. My friend who lived down the street picks me up and drops me off after school. One day, my friend drops me off and heads home. I walk down the driveway to the back door, and when I get close, I see a trail of blood on the concrete leading up to the door. And the door is cracked open, with dried bloody handprints on the doorknob and smeared on the door. I start to feel adrenaline shooting through me and get real cold. I had no idea what to do. This was 1993, so this was before cell phones were a common thing. I walked in the house trying to figure out what had happened, and there was more blood on the floor, leading up to the kitchen, where a towel was soaked in blood and draping over the sink. I turned and walked into the living room and saw the recliner he would sit in, and there was a big red splatter on the back, almost like he had been shot while sitting in his chair. I called out his name as loud as I could muster, and a few seconds later, I hear running water stop in the hallway bathroom. I hadn't identified the sound until it had stopped. I called out his name again, standing in the same place, starting to go into panic. No response. I realize that someone is there, and they're not responding. I completely panic and run out the back door. I sprint to my friend's house a few miles away and get there completely out of breath. I ring the doorbell and knock. No answer. So I go around the corner to where his room is. I see him through the window and bang on the window. And he turns around and sees me and is completely startled. He motions for me to go back to the door and he lets me in. I tell him what happened and I call my parents. My dad said he was going to call the police and to wait there. He would call me back. My dad calls back about 10 minutes later, said the police were on the way and to hang on. Just wait there while they investigate. Two hours go by. My dad called back and he is furious. Starts yelling at me about lying and what was wrong with me. Maybe I wasn't mature enough to be there without him. Tells me that I'm in a lot of trouble. He was going to figure out how to handle this and hangs up. I call him back and plead that I wasn't lying. He said the police went there. No blood. The neighbor had answered and said he had no idea what I was talking about. My friend said I could stay there, but all of my stuff was at the other house. I stayed there that night, called my dad again the next day, crying and telling him I wasn't lying, and I was too afraid to go back. He said I would have to move to their new house and finish school. My friend even spoke with my dad and tried to explain that I had shown up pale and shaking, and that I didn't seem to be lying. His parents let me stay there for a few weeks. I never picked up my clothes or laptop from the house, never returned his house key or saw him again. I ended up finishing school living with different friends, and my parents always thought it was a cry for attention.
I still have no idea what had happened there. So, I guess it's time to drop this one. Been saving it for a while. Mood is right, threat is spooky. Be my grandfather, World War II Gato class submarine crewman. Sub is out on patrol, east of Japan somewhere, hunting some smallish Japanese Coast Guard ships. Everyone is deathly silent, so as to not give away position to listening ships. Suddenly, everyone hears whispering in Japanese. Obviously, nobody could translate. He said it sounded like a young man's voice, but some other voices, like women and men, were whispering under the main voice in unison. Suddenly, the electricity goes out, absolutely dark. The whisper rises to a yell, then a scream. Screaming stops. Electricity comes back on. Everyone's scared shitless. Then, everyone hears a long scraping all the way down the hall, from bow to stern, as if fingernails were trying to rip the metal hall apart. Keep in mind, they are probably 200 feet deep at the moment. A week passes. They have sunk two small merchant ships and are headed back to refuel and get more torps. He says they all hear quiet singing in Japanese. Then, something begins tapping on the hall, to the beat of the singing. I showed him the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star song from Dead Space, and he says it was almost exactly like that, except in Japanese. Some of the crewmen faint. Grandad said he felt extremely nauseous at this point. One of the officers has a heart attack. He says he can't really explain the tension or fright in those moments but he has never been more scared in his life. He was trapped in a metal box, hundreds of feet below the surface, tormented by Japanese water spirits. His words, not mine. Once they were out of Japanese waters, they surfaced for air and let the crew stretch out. On the hall at the base of the conning tower is a line of Japanese characters. Some crewmen copy it on paper and translate it. Translate it into black water. Black ship, black souls, black hearse. Says there were four parallel scratches along the starboard side, bow to stern. This happened to me just over two weeks ago. Going to visit a friend who lives in the city. 20 mile drive, pretty comfy. Play Street Fighter and Tekken, fun times. Around 1 a.m. I decide to head home. Driving down this road with a shitload of pubs and bars on it. Normal friends everywhere. Squatting outside KFC and being retarded. Makes sense. Pub shut around 1am over here. Carry on driving. Just about to hit the turnoff for home. The whole fucking road is barricaded off because of roadworks. Oh, fuck. I don't know the areas off the main road too well. Much less when it's dark. Follow diversion. Going through abandoned residential areas and pitch black country roads starting to feel a bit odd, as I have a bit of history of my eyes playing tricks on me this late on the road. Country roads dead as fuck at least. Finally find a familiar road, decide to follow it to the nearest town and out towards home. Approaching aforementioned town, heart suddenly drops into my fucking scrotum. My headlights slowly bring into view the back of a woman dressed in white at the side of the road. Long hair, facing away from the road, head pitched down a bit. Every nerve in my body screams, Ghost! for a split second, and I fucking floor it. Couple minutes pass by, driving through the middle of town. Kind of laugh at myself for getting spooked, because it clearly wasn't a ghost. Clothes look pretty modern, so it was probably just some bitch out after a few drinks. Wait a fucking minute. Check car's clock. 2 a.m. The pub's fucking shut an hour ago. Look around. The rest of the town is completely still. Furthermore, the road she was on wasn't exactly close to the town center. At least, not by foot. For another thing, the road wasn't even that close to residential areas on foot. Wasn't out with friends for post-pub drinks. The more I think about the situation, the more it begins to weird me out. At this point... Finding out it was actually a ghost would probably make more sense to me. Anyone else have brief experiences? Like, sort of meeting a strange person on the street and passing them by? Because I've had a few. Told them here in the past before. 
first one that comes to mind. On my laptop, laying in front of it covered in a blanket with a pillow on my chin, just browsing to try and pass the time before I pass out. Suddenly, smell a very clear scent of wood burning. Not like the candles my family usually burns, like a breeze coming over a campfire clear, worried something is on fire that shouldn't be. Flop over my side and look into the darkness around me. A couch is in front of me. Behind it is a staircase. See a big, clear shadow figure rush at mock fuck down the stairs. Vanishes at the bottom with the wood burning smell. Stare into darkness a while. Roll back over on my stomach and go back to browsing. Second story that comes to mind. In the same room as the above story. Again, browsing in the same way as then. Get a feeling someone is looking at me. I am paranoid about people peeking over my shoulders, so I know this feeling. Feel it by the stairs. Figure it's the cat or little shit dog. Grab the crap wrist flashlight that I have by me and shine it up at the stairs to ease my mind. Clear orange-red eyes are staring at me. Larger than either of the ill critters I was expecting. Like human eyes with eye shine. In the edge of the light. I can make out the outline of what looks like a girl lying on her stomach watching me with that medium sort of bowl cut haircut girls used to get sometimes. Stare for a good five seconds, eyes locked with the thing. Turn the light off, roll over, and ignore the feeling until it goes away. Third story that comes to mind. Going to bathroom late at night. Closest bathroom is past a short hallway under those stairs. Flick lights on. Close door and catch myself in the doorframe for no reason. Smiling. Looking fine, reflection. What the fuck is that? See what looks like a pale face and hand peeking and looking at me down the hall. Anus loosens in fear as the door closes behind me in the moment I spot that damn thing. Stand there and decide to do my business, quickly scurrying back out of the hallway when I'm done. Tell myself it's the ducks my dad had mounted on the wall opposite of the hall. And I just saw it wrong. Look at them in the morning. They're too far away to be seen in the dark. Nowhere near as white and pale as the thing I saw. Fuck. The way I saw it, the thing had to either crawl on the wall or hang by the railing to peek and turn its head into the hall like I saw. Don't look in the mirror for a few days after that. Close the door as quick as I can. Fourth experience that comes to mind. Walking down the stairs one night. No lights on, as I have good night vision due to being a night owl. Start to reach the halfway point of the stairs. Then, in the flash of a passing car's headlights driving past the house, coming through the door's little window, I see a clear figure of shadow. A little girl in a dress, leaning on the railing, with that medium bowl haircut. Jump back up a step, recoiling. Shadow girl is gone. Heart starts beating again quickly walk the rest of the way down the stairs. Fifth story. At high school, waiting for bro to pick me up. It's raining, I don't mind. Bored as shit and away from everyone else as I'm an antisocial autist. Begin to wander between these portable classrooms, kind of like trailers. Why? Well, my legs are getting restless and I have nothing else to do. Walk into the quote-unquote alleyway between trailer classes, just enjoying the rain. A very clear, feminine, and British-accented voice rings in my ear, like someone leaning in to talk to it. In a teasing tone, it says, I can see you there, you know? Glance around. See no girl. Nor anyone else. Closest person is around 20 or so feet out of the alleyway. Retreat from the alley as quick as my chubby legs can go. Had some weird dreams at that school, too, while I napped through lunch. Next story. Now... To start this one off, I used to be scared of the dark. I was an imaginative kid, so I saw a lot of things in the dark that wasn't there. Bro shared a room with me, so I felt safe and hid under my covers if I saw anything. Just random monsters. Kid stuff. Only saw one more than once. A sort of goblin thing. An old, withered, almost mummified man with scars and a huge-ass smile crawling on the walls like a spider, watching me. Scared the shit out of me. Forget it. Assume it was just another nightly terror I jumped up and leave it at that. Until me and my bro start talking about supernatural stuff one day. 
He tells me, when we were kids, he heard heavy, raspy breathing one night. I had asthma as a kid, so he got worried and looked over at me. And from this cork board above my bed, a goblin-like head emerged, withered and dried, covered in scars, aged and with a big smile. Breathing heavily, it looked down at me as I slept. Bro and all of his love for me did exactly what I would do and rolled over. I never told anyone about the crawling man, never thought about it for years, and bro just gave me a near exact description of the fuck. Shit bricks and tell him. He's surprised about it too. I've also seen a UFO with most of my family one time, and I saw something in the woods that me and my pops think was a Bigfoot. Things always go missing in my childhood home and my brother and mother used to hear me and my younger sisters crying out for help while we were at school. Things have quieted down in recent years. Still don't like looking up at the stairs when I'm around that house at night, though. This is a genuine story. Everything that happened, I promise, is real and has been giving me nightmares and bad luck ever since. Go hiking last year with friends and brothers. Some park on the border of Indiana and Kentucky, called Clifty Falls. Very unfit, but love nature, so went anyway. Have a genuinely good time, but three hours into hike, start to slow down and get separated. Climbing up steep path, can't breathe well. Decide to sit and catch my breath. Group is maybe seven minutes ahead of me, alone at JPEG. Enjoying view at first, but suddenly, everything gets quiet. Like, too quiet like when an animal is hunting prey. Shit, 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 shit. All of a sudden, I feel weird, like I'm in a dream. Rhythmic vibrations and ground, almost like drumming. Not dehydrated, still have water. Can't be in my head. Start speed walking up the steep path in an attempt to catch up with group. Ground still vibrating like drum. Stop. Nearly have heart attack. What the fuck is that, Doc Giff? See incredibly tall figure with antlers dancing in the trees. Dance is almost ceremonial-like, unlike anything I've seen. Had to be at least ten feet tall. Long, slender black body. Big hands. Tiny eyes. It's just fucking dancing, looking at me. Captivated, but also terrified. Start walking off the path towards it, but feel sudden tap on my shoulder. It's my brother. Rest of group not far behind. Everyone is pissed. What the fuck? Dancing antler fucker is gone. So is drumming. Everyone accuses me of going ahead of the group. Swear it was the other way around. Don't mention what the fuck I just saw. Because they won't take me seriously. Ever since that day, I've had bad luck. Lost job. Got corona. Got in fight with boyfriend and had to get gallbladder removed. My rabbit is afraid of me. Still here drumming at night and scratching in the attic. Sketch to pick for y'all. Old Dutch family story literally goes back to the middle in the 19th century. My ancestors came from a small village. One of the farmers had this weird boy. The boy would walk weird, flap his hands, kill small animals sometimes touch girls' breasts. After getting a few beatings and warnings, the boy was kept on his father's farm, not even being allowed to enter the church. One day, the boy enters the church, sobbing and confused, asking to talk to the priest. The priest and several of the local men approach the boy because he is not welcome in the church. He begs the priest to allow him to stay in the church. The priest asks him why. The boy, crying and being hysterical, says he accidentally summoned the devil, and that the devil will drown him. The men of the village are hesitant and want to put the boy in a mental asylum outside the city. The boy agrees, but begs them to allow him to sleep in the church this night, because the devil will try and drown him. The priest agrees, and a carpenter goes to the city to get someone from the asylum. The boy calms down, gets a small bed, and the priest promises he will be sleeping nearby, and that he can call him any time he wants to. Three times the boy wakes up the priest, 
because he sees the devil waiting outside the church. Three times, the priest and the boy pray together and read from the Bible. At the end of the evening, it starts to rain, and small puddles form. It is almost daybreak. The priest is up already to check on the boy. The boy looks outside and says, I did it! I won from the devil! Happy and confident, the boy says he's going to look at the sunrise. The priest goes inside to get something to eat for himself and the boy. When he walks outside to give the boy some bread and cheese, he finds his dead body, drowned in one of the puddles that formed last night. Silver City, Idaho. It's just a ghost town now, but it used to be a booming gold mining town. The arriving white settlers couldn't figure out why the Indian tribes avoided hunting and fishing in certain areas. Oh, well, probably just dumb Indian superstitions. Well, the town keeps growing. More people arrive. They begin to notice strange noises coming from the mountains at night. Like singing, or sometimes like children crying. Then, weird lights near the top of the mountains where nobody lives. Settlers go to investigate. As they approach the top, the lights inexplicably disappear. No evidence of campfires, but tiny footprints in the snow and in the muddy areas. A few times, they go up to investigate the mountains, but always, the lights disappear. White settlers begin to learn about the Shoshone legends. There's something unnatural in those mountains. Something that mimics human speech. Indians describe these creatures as short but powerful men. About two feet in height, and strong enough to carry an elk on their backs. These little men didn't just occupy the mountain. They liked to come down to hunt. They looked for children. They would lure them off into the woods and eat them before anyone even noticed the children were gone. The Shoshone and Bannock tribes said they lost many children this way. Like I said, nowadays it's just an abandoned town. But you can still go visit, and people do. Especially to see the beautiful but strangely formed rocks in the mountains that resemble human faces. Pick related. I grew up on a good-sized farm in rural North Carolina. Had like 40 acres of land, mostly forest, and a couple big fields. The surrounding properties were pretty much the same, so basically just miles and miles of woods and fields in all directions. The area I was in was well known for being Native American territory. There was even a small Native American museum nearby. Not uncommon to find arrowheads and other artifacts. So, I lived here through most of my childhood, age 4 to like 16. I'm 26 now. I always felt like I was being watched. In my house, I couldn't walk room to room. I always ran full speed and looked behind me because I felt like I was being followed. Had a number of odd events go down while I lived there. I would regularly see random people walking into and out of the woods, which again was miles and miles of nothing. I had explored all of our property and a bit of the surrounding area, so I don't know where these random people were going to or coming from. It was pretty bizarre. So here's one story. Note that in this story, I wasn't aware of all the Native American shit and knew nothing of poltergeists. Also, I have a near photographic memory, which is why I remember obscure details. Be me, age 10 or so, have several quads and rode them pretty much daily. Would often ride around with my pelican shooting at random shit for fun and exploring. This was before everyone had cell phones by the way. We had a small deer plot at the bottom of this steep hill and a shooting lane leading to it. I regularly would park at the top of this hill and watch the wildlife occasionally shooting at birds or whatever, but rarely hit anything. There was a big half-buried rock I would park my quad on to keep from rolling down the hill. Be doing the above activity one afternoon, broad daylight, parked on the rock, watching the birds and rabbits and squirrels through the scope on my pelican. Shit was cash. Suddenly, everything goes dead silent, like the kind of silent where all you hear is the blood pumping through your ears feel every single hair on my body stand on end. What the fuck that wave? This has never happened before. The animals I'd been watching were frozen. Suddenly, 
hear slow, heavy breathing coming from right behind me, and what sounds like a momentary, deep, quiet growl. Freeze. Literally felt electricity in the air. Like when you go down those plastic slides in McDonald's. Overcome with pure dread and felt tears welling up. Slowly, turn around expecting to see a mountain lion or something, thinking I'm only moments away from death. Could still hear the breathing right the fuck in front of me, four feet away. There's nothing there. Absolutely fucking nothing. Friend, what a JPEG. Every cell in my body was saying to run the fuck away. But I was afraid if I moved, I'd be attacked. In that moment, I suddenly heard my mom calling my name way off in the distance. Finally grow some balls and start the quad, and take the fuck off full speed, throwing my pellet gun on the ground. Remember the gun landing barrel first, and thinking my dad was going to be pissed if he found out because he told me never to let dirt get in the barrel. Fuck it, I'm about to die anyways. Absolutely fly top speed back to the house and ask my mom what she wanted. She hadn't called my name. Absolutely mind fucked. Took weeks before I went out again. For years, I never told anyone about this. I'm sort of autistic, so I just never really understood what it was that happened. Not until years later, when a friend was talking to me about hauntings, did I suddenly remember all the odd shit I experienced as a kid. And it finally clicked that maybe it was a poltergeist or something. When I think about it now, it freaks me out even more than it did then. Got a story from my childhood. A lot of spooky stories from when I was a kid turned out to have logical answers. Neighbors jumping my fence, sleep paralysis, and etc. But this one doesn't so much. Be me, approximately 10 years ago, age 9. Recently moved to this weird house on a hill. Because it was built like shit, rain from high air on the hill would run through the house, driving the humidity so high that mushrooms would grow in the grout between the tiles. Creepy fucking statue in the middle of the front yard. Got into Doctor Who like two years earlier and just hit puberty. So, I developed anxiety which in turn developed a massive phobia of statues. Fuck weeping angels, bro. For real. Anyway, so, one morning, I noticed the statue has rotated slightly towards the house. Mom dismisses it as just puberty-induced paranoia, saying she was the same way at my age. It keeps gradually rotating more and more and I'm the only one who notices this, despite pointing it out and progressively becoming more of an anxious wreck about it. More weird shit starts happening. Next door neighbor randomly makes us some food, get insane bad vibes off of her, and refuse to eat the food. This is unusual since, as a kid, I was extremely polite and trusting, to the point of being quite gullible, nearly ate shifty sweets from a creepy old man, kind of polite and gullible. Everyone but me get sick. What the fuck? Paranoia worsens, having breakdowns every night. Begin praying to specifically live until I'm 93. Parents think I'm just fucktarded. We go for a walk through the nearby parklands, further down the hill. Heaps of broken stone statues lying around. Nobody seems to fucking notice. Cannot shit pants any harder at this point. Generally terrified of all statues, until I moved out a few months later. Time goes by. Assume my parents were right. Fast forward to last year, 17 or 18. Been helping my grandpa, who lives near old house. Drive by, just out of curiosity. The statue isn't there anymore. Resume shooting pants. What the fuck, bros? What the fuck? Be me, asleep. Having dream. Weird dream. The sky is brown. I'm in the back of a car and everything is somewhat dark. Apocalyptic almost type of setting. Look to my right in the back of the car. There's a doll, maybe three feet tall. Reach towards doll. Pluck out the giant crimson anime eyes and place them over my own. Instantly wake up. Hear deep voice talking in my ear. Talfum. Okay. Freaked out, but forget. Still hear Talfin in my head. 
Google out of curiosity. It means to baptize in German. Shit pants. Anyway, not too spooky, but it made me get baptized. I don't know why Mr. Demon told me to get baptized. Seems counterproductive. Keep in mind, this will use both my own memories and second-hand accounts from my parents who remember this incident. Be about six years old. Just began sleeping in my own room since we were able to move into a house that allowed for us to have our own room. Excited because I felt like I was finally a big boy who can quote-unquote live on his own. First night, feel hot. Like, very hot. Live in Texas, so heat was not a rare issue, but this felt unbearable. Almost to the point of not being able to breathe. Just go to the living room to sleep and forget about it. Next night, the heat returns. But this time, feels less warm and more mean. My six-year-old mind didn't know what malice was, so that was the best way I could describe it. Made me want to leave my room, but I couldn't. Something made me so scared that it got me frozen. Tried yelling for my dad, but almost like those dreams where you yell and nothing comes out. Same thing here, but I knew I wasn't dreaming. Now here is where my memory gets fuzzy, so I'm going to go off what my parents remember. Next day, I go to my dad and tell him about the past two nights. He chalks it up to me being scared all alone in the dark. He decides that day to put a nightlight in my room, and hopefully that helps. Comes into my room that night like he usually does, and this time, he reads me a bedtime story all in hopes to calm me down. He leaves, and seemingly that's the end of it. Fast forward to about 2 a.m. or so. The absolute worst blood-curdling scream he has ever heard comes from my room. So loud, it actually wakes up the neighbors. My dad is not a fast man, but that day, you swear he had super speed the way he was able to get to my room so fast. Our rooms were on opposite sides of the house. Dad basically breaks the door off of its hinges and sees me on the floor crying and cowering for my life in a corner of the room. My dad goes on to explain how, as soon as he went in, he felt this pure aura of just anger and malice. Dad picks me up and bolts out of that room. Sleep with them for the next two nights. My dad doesn't talk about the room for those days, not wanting to scare me. Tells me that, after that, he talked to my mom about it. My mom, being religious and an avid believer in the paranormal, tells my dad it has to be some sort of spirit haunting the room. My dad, still skeptical, decides to say fuck it and sleep in the room himself, just to make sure he didn't just imagine it, since he was still groggy and half awake when he came into my room that night. Later that night, he tucks me in with my mother and goes to sleep in my room. Next day, we find him sleeping in the living room. Mom asks Dad what happened. He begins to go on this huge tirade about how the room made him feel nauseous and almost depressed. Said that the heat itself was bad, but that at around 2 a.m. he felt almost suicidal, to the point of thinking to just turn on the car's gas and let it be. My father is not a depressive, nor has he ever had a history of such. Tells my mom that something is definitely fucked up about that room. My sister, she was about 17, hears my dad say this and, as most teenagers do, tend to not believe him, so she says she'll sleep in the room, to much of my mother's dismay. Later that night, my sister goes into my room. About 2 a.m., same as last night, and same as two nights before. She bolts out of my room. And I don't mean run. I mean she almost leaped out of my room with how fast she tried to leave. My mother tells me that she even caught my sister trying to leave the house entirely in a mess of sweat and tears. Later that night, after my sister calms down, my parents ask her what exactly happened. She goes on to explain that she had been touched by something, and not just a normal grazing feel or strained sensation. She means grabbed and groped. She explains that while the room itself became scorching hot, the touches felt like they were setting her on fire burning her. She said that the pain may have been one thing, but the sheer feeling of anguish and despair she felt while it happened was on an entirely different level. 
She explained it as the feeling you get when someone you love dies, and you have to see their body in a casket. Of course, to my mother and father, they knew what that felt like, losing a parent and grandparent respectively. My mom finally tells us she wants to sleep in that room. Dad tells her not to, and just call a priest or something. Mom says she wants to confirm it herself. Part of me thinks she just wanted to have a piece of the paranormal pie. That night, we all go to bed, and my mom goes into my room. Same verse as the first, second, and third. 2 a.m., and shit hits the fan. This time, we hear crashing and screaming. Dad once again runs into the room. Tells me to stay in their bed until he comes back. Can hear sister running to my room as well. Can hear talking, but... No real words can be made out. Later that day, my mom explains what happened. Mom tells my dad she felt the exact same malice and anger that he and my sister did. Only this time, she could feel a direction. She could tell where it was. She continued to explain that she just knew where I was sitting or standing or whatever. At first, she left it be since it wasn't really trying to harm her. But, then she told my dad something, and later to me, which to this day has never left our minds. She begins to tell my dad that not only was it there, but it spoke to her. Not the same quiet whisper my sister got, but full audible speech. She says the spirit began talking about my father first, saying things like, He only chose you because you were the easiest. He only chose you because he needed a rebound. Only reason he stayed was the kid. For context, I am my father's only child. My sisters were from a different marriage. She then began saying the spirit talked about me, how he'll end up being buried by you. He'll never amount to anything because you'll never let him. And this went on for maybe 30 minutes until she just lost it. My sister felt fear. My dad felt depression. I felt malice. My mother felt pure, unfiltered anger. My mom isn't someone known for her temper, but when she is mad, she's terrifying. This was one of those moments. Mom finally told my dad to call a priest to bless the house and exercise any bad juju. Call a family friend who was also the priest at her local church. Priest comes in and immediately asks, Can you show me your son's room? My mother and my father never told him about the room. When asked why he wanted to start there, the priest just said, I think that's where I'm needed the most. My mom allows him in and leads him into my room. Priest stops, almost frozen. Tells my parents that there is something evil, something cruel in here. And as he said that, he turns to the corner of the room. Same place my mother told my dad where she felt it. Priest points and says, There. That is where it lives. It's no spirit. It's a demon. I don't know what brought it here nor why it resides in this exact area, but something about this land attracts it. Priest, as he says this, begins to set crosses and candles around the room, grabbing his holy water. Begins to pray and spread the holy water. As he's doing that, the whole room goes hot hotter than anyone has ever felt it, to the point where we were all drenched in sweat as this happened. Priest is praying and spraying at this point. Looked like a movie almost. The whole time it felt like something was struggling, clinging to the room. And then, after 30 minutes, it stopped. No more heaviness. Temperature went the same as the rest of the house. Everything felt normal. Priest then says that it decided to go. It knew that it couldn't stay. Fast forward about two years, and my father and priest friend decided to discuss what exactly happened. Priest begins to explain that, for some reason, the demon felt an abnormal amount of attraction to that one area, that one bit of the house that was full of malice and anger. Says he researched the house, and for what he knows, no one was ever killed there or Indian burial ground or any of that crap. Just something there fed its evil nature. Tells my dad that it's not unheard of 
for a demon to just choose a random house, and especially a random room. But when it does happen, it happens for a reason. To this day, neither the priest nor my parents know why. Now I'm 23, and to this day, I still think about that room. I still sleep in it sometimes when I visit my folks, but nothing ever feels off. If you see it, it's just a normal everyday middle-class room. I have had some paranormal experiences here and there since then, some bigger and more unexplainable than others. But nothing ever tops this one. Nothing ever gets close to this one. It has always stuck in my mind. It is possibly why I still believe in the paranormal at all. Just the amount of evidence I witnessed firsthand those two weeks or so was enough to tell me this isn't all superstition and voodoo. I still wonder sometimes what it was that attracted that thing to my room. Not my parents, not my sisters, nowhere in the house but my room. Maybe demons are just more attracted by toddlers since they are more innocent and easier to corrupt. I'm not a theologian, so I can't say for sure. All I know is that in some sick way, I hope I can encounter something like that again. Thanks for reading. Live with friend on a basement for about five years now. Both college dropouts, smoking weed, playing guitar, not really spiritual. His mom, who was a Christian for the longest time, would visit from time to time. One day, she's over. Does a weird prayer with both of us. Weird mumbling, blah, blah, blah. Friend walks out of the room. Stare at him, horrified. He stares at the end of a dark hallway for three minutes. What's wrong? Anon? Do you see how he looks at me? Do you see his eyes, Anon? He always stares at me. Look at the hallway and see the shadow of a man about eight feet tall. It disappears. Oh god, oh fuck, dot JPEG. Both dazed and shitting our pants. Go to bed. Wake up to the shadow trying to fight me. I wrestle it for what felt like an entire hour. Friend's mom walks in. She starts praying. What are you doing, dumb bitch? See bright light on the roof. Absorb the shadow. My face went. Wait, you didn't include a picture. How do we know what your face is when? Mid to late 1980s, Eastern Europe. Dad is really into hiking. Has his favorite trail with old, very old, abandoned shacks that mountain people used to live in. Dad met some people in a bar in the closest town to the trail. Ends up going on the trail with some guy and two girls. They get to the shack, have a bit of wine, but don't get too drunk though. My dad gets along with the guy, and they talk literature, philosophy, art, etc. Girls go to sleep, bored. As Dad said, the conversation he had with the guy was very deep, and when they got into philosophy, and soon religion, the conversation had a weird fever dream flow. Except for the wine they drank two plus hours ago, they're fully sober. Suddenly, my dad feels absolutely fucking horrible. Just pure evil in the air. Despair and misery. The guy looks like he also felt it. The girls wake up. They don't say a single word. Both my dad and the guy start crying. It passes. Girls are confused. Both my dad and the guy have no idea what happened. And they never met again. Fast forward a couple of years. Dad goes there with a girlfriend. They go into the same shack where he was with the two girls and the guy. The hole in the corner of the room for a bonfire is filled with rocks. Decides not to bother, goes to a different one. Has a weird feeling anyway. They spend two nights there. Morning after second night. Dad is just sitting with the girl and smoking cigarettes and talking. Suddenly, he hears a loud noise. The shack, the one they were supposed to be staying, just fucking collapsed out of nowhere. I've actually been there twice. Went there once with my dad when I was a kid, and everything was cool, nothing happened. I fell asleep early. The second time, I was with my girlfriend, and I just felt very uncomfortable the whole time. That was a year ago. This happened in Sawyer County, Wisconsin. Area is quite rural. Brother and I would spend a lot of time outdoors, exploring. Being young boys, we would race from one spot to the next. 
He was older than me, and he always won. One day, we're racing to the base of this little hill. He beats me as usual, and I decide to walk the rest of the way. I can see my bro ascending the hill. Foot slips in a huge puddle of water, and I almost fall. When I regain my balance, I look up, and brother is gone. The whole world looks dark, like when it's about to storm. I call out my brother's name. No response. Feeling nervous about the hill, I take a step backwards. Right into the same fucking puddle. Fall on my back, right into the water. Splash dot gif. When I get back up, the whole world is normal again, bright and sunny. I hear my brother's voice. He's on the hill, laughing at me. Nothing else happened, sorry if it's kind of lame, but it's the weirdest thing I've experienced. Mate of mine likes to go sailing off the coast, spending an afternoon on the water. Here's a splash beside the boat and looks over the side. Sees a woman's face, clear as day through the water. A pale redhead, her eyes are even sparkling in the bright sunlight, strikingly beautiful. She's mouthing something, like she's trying to talk. Her face recedes into the darkness of the water, like something slowly pulls her down. Friend is shocked, and decides to head back to shore. See some activity back where the other boats are. A small crowd of people bustling about. A woman drowned. My mate recognizes her as the woman in the water. Overcome with a deep sorrow, he leaves the crowd and rushes into his boat. He cries for a long time. He said the sadness he felt was unreal. It was like losing a loved one. But after a certain point, he just felt normal again and wondered why the fuck he'd gotten so emotional. See lights on a structure from where I live for years. Always wonder what they are. Drive out to them when I finally get car. It's just a TV transmitting station thing. Park up there before I head back. Live in the city, and always forget how clearly you can see the stars when you're in the countryside. Totally clear night too, just windy as fuck. Look up at stars. There's this really strange star that you can see, even in the city. It flashes red, then white, then blue, all of the time. Science teacher told us it was a satellite. Show it to friend once, and he says it's definitely not a satellite because it's too small and satellites move much faster. Anyway, I start looking for it. Can't see it. Too many stars. See shooting star, but it's moving at a steady pace and stays the same luminosity. Watch it traveling. Notice another coming from the east. They're going to hit each other. Stop a little distance apart and merge. One of them starts heading north. The other starts heading west. And then a third one has appeared from where they met that travels southeast. No idea what they were, but it was still pretty cool to see. If I lived out there, I would just set a telescope up and watch for interesting sky memes. Be me. Be 16. There is a whole abandoned village not so far. Go there to explore with a friend. Let's call him Jeff for the sake of anonymity. Wooded area. Only a dirt road leads to the place. It's a mess. Tall grass, waist height, everywhere. On roads, gardens, damn, even in some houses. Arrive and start looking around. Old peasant houses, a few bigger households, a church, etc. Regular village stuff. Exploring for a good hour. Jeff starts to get jumpy. What's wrong, buddy? Scared, huh? What? No, no. I just... I think I saw something move around. Write it off as the magic of the place. Go into a house that wasn't completely destroyed. Get a sudden feel that I'm being watched. A feeling that something is behind me and can't see it because it moves away as a turn. Uneasy feeling intensifies to the point when my eyes start to water up. Not good. Time to leave. As we go back to the place we entered the village, we see mannequins in some windows. Probably just didn't realize them on the way in. Jeff screams. I'm not shitting. Two mannequins were standing on the road in front of us. On the road, we entered the place. 
There is no way those were there before. We both lose it and storm through the forest till we get home. Never return there. Does anyone remember that video of the family in Tallahassee who recorded this sound coming out of the sky? I actually live in that same area, and I heard it too. Live alone on a small trailer. I'm at my table reading a book and eating dinner when I hear what sounds like a distant roar of a jet engine. We'd had some really bad storms, so I figured it was probably more thunder. Sound keeps getting louder. It's definitely getting closer. Run to the door and look out the sky. Think maybe a plane was going down. Fuckload of trees, so I can't see much. The noise is almost deafening now. It's like there's a fucking jet engine right on top of my house. The sound is literally making my head throb. The only thing I've ever felt that was even close to this is that feeling you get when you manually force yourself to relax your entire body. It's like I'm fighting to stay conscious. Drop like a sack of potatoes in the doorway. I can't move. It's like the sound is pinning me to the ground. I throw up. This goes on for what feels like eons. The sound swells in intensity and changes over time. By the end, it sounded much more like some piece of huge industrial machinery as opposed to an engine. Super bright flash of light out of nowhere. Sound instantly stops. I called 911 and they told me a lot of people had reported the same thing and that they're not sure what's going on. Also, when I went into my backyard the next day, Squirrel is lying at the base of a big tree. Figure it must have been stunned by the sound and fell and broke its neck. Go up to get a better look. Nope.x. Whatever killed that squirrel, it wasn't a fall. Its eyes were bulging almost completely out of its skull. Looks like it suffered some kind of massive brain hemorrhage. I remember the way my head throbbed when the sound was on top of my trailer. Consider myself lucky. 2007. Grew up in Arizona desert. People don't realize how fucking weird shit gets out there. Friends and I would camp out there, and guaranteed, we would hear at least a few weird things, or see some shit. Don't want to say we got used to it, but we weren't not used to it at the same time. Have a ton of stories, but this one fits the thread theme. Anyway, sometime in early high school, we decided to go out and camp during the long weekend. Parents are all used to it, don't really care. Pack up and hike out into friend's property, which is massive. Get to our usual camping spot and notice it's fucking trashed. Not like litter, but the shit itself looks like a tornado went through it. Figure maybe it was a big dust devil. There's weird scorch marks in the dirt. Pieces of rock almost look melted together. We figure it must have been big fireworks. There's kind of a weird smell in the air, but it's easily ignored. We decide to stay. Rebuild a fire pit. Everything is fine until the sun goes down. Then, we start hearing shit. Sounds like really raspy mumbling. None of us have heard anything like it before. So, we're all kind of on alert. Sound is getting closer. Seems to be moving in a circle around camp. None of us are armed, but one of us has a hunting knife. Doesn't really make us feel safer, though. Way too dark to hike back. We're basically stuck out here. Over the course of about an hour, the sound fades and gets louder randomly. The more we listen to it, the more we start thinking it's not really chanting. It's more like that weird humming sound power lines make. Starts to smell like hot sand. Friend with the knife is convinced we're going to get fucking abducted by aliens or something. Starts freaking out and throwing flaming pieces of wood out into the dark. We're telling him he's an idiot, and it's probably just some weird animal. Then, one of the pieces hits something about 50 yards away. Get a brief glimpse of something rust-colored, and almost the texture of steel wool. Had that same kind of loopy ribbon look, if that makes sense. Whatever it is, is definitely not a human or animal. We all start chucking pieces of flaming stuff at it. It doesn't seem to care. Eventually, there's enough debris that we can get a better look at it. 
It was like a squarish stick figure. Kind of like those Cocopelli things, but without the hair. It's made of this shifting, rusted, wire-looking material. It's letting out that weird humming sound. The ground it touches starts to burn and scorch. Circles the camp a few times like it wants to come closer, but doesn't want to get close to the light. We're all peeing ourselves, thinking we're about to die. Suddenly, it lets out this really loud metallic shriek and fucking flies backward like it's rocket-powered. Everyone flips shit. We leave the gear and sprint all the way back to the car. Peel out. Come back for our stuff like a week later. Most of it is burnt. Never camp there again. Apparently as a child, I told my parents I saw some weird ass shit. My dad told me when I was like three or four. I told him that, Do you remember when we were waiting for mommy to come home from them? And the son went over the roof of our house to bring her back. He did a double take and asked what I said. I replied, Yeah, when the son went over our house and brought mommy back. It's sort of surreal because I don't remember anything, even me saying that. To this day, he swears UFOs were involved with our family early on in some way. Because as a kid, he remembers some weird shit happening. Some sort of craft going over him while he and his friends were playing outside, living in a woods, and playing outside at night. Lights coming down from the craft and chasing them all around. This was the size of Zeppelin and floating silently. To this day, he gets a bit emotional about it, and truly believes aliens used humans as experiments. I accidentally killed a person who committed suicide by running out in front of my car. Hasn't gone to court yet. Today, my legal team got CCT footage from a subpoena showing the guy was laying down in a ditch next to the road, waiting for a car to pass, which should be enough to clear my name. What paranormal implications will this have on me? Ghost. Be me. See ghost. This is the best one I've read so far. <laughs> the absolute worst blood cuddling... Cuddling. It says cuddling. <laughs> Sixth story. Sixth story. Sixth... <laughs> Jesus. Sixth... 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 Sixth story. Sixth... Sixth... Sixth story. Sixth story. Why can I not say this? Had some weird dreams at that school, too. Oh, jeez, I can't even read that sentence right. Okay. All right. Sixth, sixth story. Okay. All right. Sixth. Oh, my God. Sixth. <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind. Sixth story. <sighs> ah. Had some weird dreams at that school, too, while I napped through lunch. Sixth story. Oh, fuck this. Sixth story. It's it's just six story. Next story. No, it's next story. Oh. 